When learning the blood vessels, it's often helpful to start with a centralized location, okay? a home base, so to speak. And the home base that I'm going to use is the heart. So let's start with the heart. Okay. So let's start with the main blood vessel coming from the heart, which is going to be the aorta. Remember, we're tracing blood through the arteries here to the body. Okay. Now, this aorta is going to descend through the thoracic cavity. So we're going to call it the thoracic aorta when it's in the thoracic cavity. And once it passes through the diaphragm, the name is going to change to the abdominal aorta. Now we can think of this main blood vessel right here as being an interstate highway. And that interstate highway is going to have exits. This main blood vessel is going to have branches. Okay? The first branch I'm going to talk about is this branch up here, which is going to be the brachiocephalic trunk. Now this brachiocephalic trunk is going to branch into a right common carotid and a right subclavian artery. Once this right subclavian artery passes a landmark, specifically the first rib, the name is going to change. It's still the same tube, but the name changes. And the name changes to the axillary artery. Now, this axillary artery is going to give off a few branches. Some people like to use the subscapular artery as a landmark distinguishing between the axillary artery and the brachial artery, which is going to be down here. Some people like to use the anterior and posterior humeral circumflex. Now, this brachial artery right here is going to run with the humerus, which is going to sit next to it. This brachial artery is going to have many branches. We're just going to talk about the main branches right here. We're going to talk about the radial artery and the ulnar artery. But it's got a lot of different branches. We could talk about the anterior and posterior humeral circumflex. We can talk about profunda brachii. We could talk about the radial and ulnar collaterals. We could talk about the radial and ulnar recurrence and astomosing with those collaterals. We're not going to do that. We're just going to stick with the main blood vessels here. Those other blood vessels would be good to study in grad school. I'm going to go back up to the right subclavian and talk about some of the branches off the right subclavian. We're going to have a vertebral artery. And remember, the vertebral arteries are going to pass up through the transverse foramen in the cervical vertebra. Okay. We'll also have a thyrocervical trunk, and we'll also have a costocervical trunk. I'm going to go back to the arch of the aorta and talk about the other two branches off the arch of the aorta. Remember, we already discussed brachiocephalic trunk, which is one branch. We're going to have a left common carotid, and a left subclavian. Okay. Now, these common carotids up here, they will branch, and they'll branch into the internal carotids and the external carotids. Internal carotid would go into the skull to supply blood to the brain, along with the vertebral arteries, and there'd be a vertebral artery over here as well. The external carotids are going to supply blood to the face and head. Now, this left subclavian is going to do the same thing as the right subclavian. It's going to have a vertebral artery, a thyrocervical trunk, a costocervical trunk. Once it passes the first rib, the name's going to change to axillary and so on, all the way down the left arm. Okay. So since it's the same, I'm just going to leave it like this. Going back to the thoracic aorta, the thoracic aorta is going to have branches that will pass between the ribs. Okay? And those branches, 
that go between the ribs are called the intercostal arteries. Okay. I'll write it out as this, the ICAs. Remember, we've got the ICs up here, the internal carotids. They're different from the intercostal arteries. Now, those intercostal arteries will circle around the ribs and join up in the front to a blood vessel that runs just lateral to the sternum, and that blood vessel is going to be the internal thoracic artery. Now, we'd follow the thoracic aorta down to the diaphragm right here and remember once it passes through the diaphragm the name is going to change to the abdominal aorta. So I'm going to erase this picture and I'm going to continue drawing the lower part of this picture. If you found this video helpful click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhealth.com